Hello everyone, it's Emily here, and today we're going to be talking about Hirschsprung's disease. So let's begin with some multiple choice questions to see what our knowledge base is. Question 1. What age does this often present? Is it A, any time up to one year, B, the first month, C, any time up to three years, or D, the first six months? Think about any children in the past you may have seen with this, with this condition, and when did it first become apparent? The answer is A, any time up to one year. Hirschsprung's most commonly presents around that time. Question two. What is the most definitive test for diagnosing Hirschsprung's? A, ultrasound, B, abdominal x-ray, C, rectal biopsy, or D, contrast enema? Try and think about what the disease is and what would be the most effective means of diagnosis. It's C, rectal biopsy. Question three. What plexus or plexuses are involved? A, submucosal, B, myenteric, C, both, or D, adventitia. Think about the gut wall organisation. The answer is... C, both. So today we're going to be talking about what Hirschsprung's disease is, the symptoms in the history, investigations and differential diagnosis, clinical examination and OSCE tips, and finally we're going to summarise and go back over the MCQs that we've just done to see whether we've learned anything in this session. So what is Hirschsprung's? It's a congenital condition characterised by partial or complete colonic function obstruction associated with absence of ganglion cells. The absence of the ganglion cells is called agangliosis. There is no myenteric or submucosal plexuses and the absent per peristalsis. So the gut smooth muscle stays contracted causing a blockage of the faeces. As you can see here, this section has no nerves and so peristalsis doesn't happen. That means that there's a blockage above it and so the colon becomes enlarged. So what are the symptoms? Hirschsprung's commonly presents in a newborn period up until about a year of age. Normally there'll be vomiting, explosive passage of liquid and foul stools, the stasis of the stools without passage leads to bacterial overgrowth and secretory diarrhea and enterocolitis. The patient will be bloated and there'll be a delayed passage with the meconium, which is common within the 48 hours of life. The meconium is the first poo that a baby does, really. There'll also be fever, which indicates enterocolitis or sepsis, and the baby may have failure to thrive and feeling intolerance. The history. So a patient may present in a variety of ways. Here are a few examples. Let's see if you can pick out the key points. A 4 day old baby presents with bilious vomiting and significant abdominal distension. Or, a one-month-old baby boy presents with feeding intolerance, abdominal distension and copious diarrhoea. Commonly, diarrhoea with vomiting, fever, abdominal distension and failure to thrive will be the history. What investigations would you do to look at a baby with Hirschsprungs? Normally, you do an abdominal x-ray. There'll be air fluid levels present and a dilated colon. This is non-specific, however, we can diagnose Hirschsprung's in other ways as well. You'll do a contrast enema, which would show a contracted distal bowel and a dilated proximal bowel. This is the best diagnostic test. Rectal biopsy. This is a definite diagnosis. However, it's difficult to obtain in newborns since good rectal exposure requires a general anaesthetic and that can be quite dangerous. Suction biopsy has now gained wide acceptance. But the biopsy must include the mucosa and the submucosa and must be 1.5 centimetres above the pectinate line. On to differential diagnosis. Meconium plug syndrome. This will be resolved with an expulsion of a plug of meconium and so the symptoms will resolve on their own and the absence of other signs characteristic of Hirschsprung's disease help to establish the diagnosis of this. Cystic fibrosis, meconium ileus. 
Meconium ileus is manifested by um, the absence of CFTR uh, channels due to cystic fibrosis. Manifested by a clinical picture consistent with intestinal obstruction, with the child frequently exhibiting respiratory symptoms, they also may have a cystic fibrosis family history. Hypothyroidism. Ab patients with hypothyroidism will have abdominal distension and they will also have bradycardia, disinterest in eating and other signs associated with hypothyroidism. You can test for this by also testing their TSH levels, which will be elevated. Chronic constipation. In chronic constipation, the colon is dilated and full of fecal matter all the way down to the anal canal. Distal small bowel atresia or stenosis. A plain x-ray often shows evidence of an intestinal atresia. Clinical examination. On clinical examination, the abdomen will be distended and that's very typical and may be persistent in older children too. There may be fever, and diagnosis is mainly based on history, investigations, and exclusion of other potential causes. Tips for OSCE. Always consider Hirschsprung's disease if a child under one has unexplained persistent ad abdominal distension. Consider enterocolitis secondary to Hirschsprung's if the child has a fever and has explosive stools. So in summary, we're gonna go back over the MCQs to see whether we've learned anything. Question one. What age does this often present? Any time up to one years old, the first month, any time up to three years old, or D, the first six months? The answer is any time up to one years old. Question two, what is the most definitive test for diagnosing Hirschsprungs? A, ultrasound, B, abdominal x-ray, C, rectal biopsy, or D, contrast enema? The answer is rectal biopsy. Question three, what plexus or plexuses are involved? A, submucosal, B, myenteric, C, both, or D, adventitia? The answer is C, both. Well, well done guys, that's the end of the slideshow. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's been useful. Please come back for more revision materials.